Are ghosts real? Several recent encounters suggest there might be more things in heaven and earth than we can dream of. So are werewolves just a Hollywood creation, or do half-man, half-wolf creatures really exist? Now, tonight, we kick off our Conspiracy Theory Month series, which was a... The legend of the vampire actually goes back for centuries, and it exists in some form or another in almost every culture. In fact, some people believe the first vampire story was in the Bible. Well, for decades, only crackpots and crazy people believed in UFOs. That's what I thought anyway. And then in recent years, it turns out that governments have been taking them seriously all along. Try and clear up an ancient mystery with the help of a common veterinarian who says she can prove that Bigfoot exists and that he's related to all of us. New reports by pilots coming forward over the weekend saying they've had multiple mid-air encounters with high-flying, fast-moving objects. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Celestial Oddities Pair of Normal Guys podcast. I am your host, Freder Crow. And I'm your co-host, Daniel James. We do want to thank you for listening in tonight, whether listening live, streaming after the fact, or you've downloaded it to your device for on the go. Thank you for your patronage and support. Click the like, share, and follow button from whatever platform you're listening to us from, from iTunes to iHeartRadio, Spotify, Deezer, Spreaker, CastBox, Google, Amazon, doesn't matter, we're across it all. So listen where you feel most comfortable by, by, by clicking those buttons, what that does for us allows more people to discover the show, moves up the podcast community rankings of the show itself, allows you access to all new episodes as they air and unfiltered access to our past archives. So something for absolutely everyone in the paranormal and supernatural community. Dive through the past episodes, you'll find something you love on there. Always bringing you great up-to-date you know, ideas and different theories um, between Daniel and myself on great topics that are out there. If you are you know, a return guest to the show, you know what we're talking about and we thank you. If you are new to the show, stick around. We certainly think you'll find something you like here this evening. This is actually one of our special episodes. This is what we call Odd World, where we do take on listeners' um, you know, phone calls to tell us about stories of the paranormal and supernatural natural so should be a fun episode so make sure as i said you listen from where you feel most comfortable spread the show around and uh, we look forward to jumping into an awesome episode with you guys tonight what do you think dan i'm super excited about this this has been something that i've wanted to experiment with for a really long time on the show and odd world's a fun opportunity for the listeners and for the fans and for anybody just general uh generally interested in getting their story out there and having their voice heard we're taking live calls tonight okay so everything that you hear on the show are going to be real people that are that uh, we are reaching out to to have them share a specific experience or a paranormal esoteric encounter that they have had in their lives and uh kind of you know, give our feedback and our and our insights on those experiences for those people and really just have fun and sharing. You know, we want to share. Well, it should be interesting, too, because, folks, if you're listening out there and you are, you know, are not new to the show, last season I did air a few different episodes of Odd World by myself where I did um, take on phone calls from listeners out there. But it was something that it was very sporadic on timing of when we could do it and fit it into the schedule. So Dan and I weren't able to do it at that time together. So we're very excited tonight to, for the first time, bring this side of things of, of the show to you. Um, and we have more capabilities of phone calls now and not only making phone calls out but in um so you know we're certainly adding to our arsenal but it's always fun um bringing on strangers to the show because we have no idea what we're going to come across dan and i usually have specific episodes picked out as far as topics and then we kind of freehand our different just you know our different thoughts and feelings on the matter well tonight is one of those times where we don't know what we're going to get into certainly excited to find out and we have three different callers tonight that uh it'll be fun to hear you know what they they have to say yeah i'm really looking forward to this so here in about five minutes we're going to call our first guest and her name is sierra and i don't exactly know what she's going to be sharing tonight but i've actually met sierra in person once i'll give you guys a little backstory we her she used to work at this store in town that i lived in and so i would run into her a few times actually and we were very cordial and friendly to each other and you know had that nice familiarity of like i was the regular who always came in she's always really cool really nice 
and I'll be looking forward to hearing what her experience is. Now, our second guest is going to be someone very near and dear to my heart. This will be my mother, my very own mom, Sherry, and she reminded me of an experience that we had when I was a little kid that when she told me about it blew my mind because who I've become today and the man that I am now uh, is very representative of an experience like this. So uh, in one hand, I'm not surprised that this happened, but I am totally surprised of the experience itself because I have no recollection of it whatsoever, and I will leave it up to her to tell you guys what happened. And then our third caller tonight will be a personal friend of mine, Chanel. And Chanel is somebody that I met through the television and film industry here in Pittsburgh, but we had uh, developed a friendship online uh, that, you know, her and I both share an interest in the paranormal, and she has been a paranormal investigator, and um, she's somebody that I've had countless hours of conversations with on the esoteric and concept of the paranormal and extraterrestrials and things of that nature and i do not know what her story is tonight but i am very excited that she has come forward to share it with me because um she's now becoming a youtuber herself and she's getting herself out there and i'm very proud of her you know uh, sharing her story and that's what we want to do for you guys so before we get into this if you are listening now or you're listening later and you have a story that you feel is relevant to the esoteric or to the paranormal or to the metaphysical, we are happy to hear it. You guys can always reach out to us online through our Facebook group, through our email at celestialoddities at gmail.com. And who knows, maybe your story will be a great fit for our show and you could be on one of the future episodes. I'll tell you what, man, I've had some interesting phone calls to- Excuse me, phone calls too. <clears throat> Couldn't talk. Um, that have just kind of surprised me. That you know, you expect the ghost stories and, and and you know a lot of the things that you know people talk about. But when someone starts throwing out different visitation stories or voodoo witch doctors from Southern Africa and and and, and these different things that have come across to our show, Dan, we're very fortunate that you know people listen to the show and want to share these with us and share with the world. If you are comfortable with sharing your name, you can. If you want to stay anonymous, that is also okay. Um, We don't mind either way. I have a few people that have reached into me and said that they want to send me through, you know, typing their story for us to read out. They just don't want to be on the show and we respect that as well and we will share those stories. So, um, you know, reach out to us if you have any experiences and we look forward to bringing you another great analysis of some supernatural and paranormal activity. I'm going to pull up our phone number of our first person now. We're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to give them a call. Dan, are you good to go? I am good to go, and I'm just going to go ahead and um, echo that one statement you made I feel is really strong and important. I have had a few inquiries by people online who might be interested in uh, calling in, but they would like to remain anonymous, so you do not have to give us your names um, when, when you call in, uh, just, just so you guys feel more comfortable if that is a request, then we're totally, totally cool with that. Absolutely. Well, hey, guys, let's go ahead and jump into it. I have our first number pulled up. Let's give them a ring. This is Sierra. Sounds awfully loud for some reason all of a sudden. If you guys are listening out there and it sounds off, please tell us. We'll go ahead and adjust as needed. This is uh, our first episode doing it the way that we are tonight. So let us know if anything sounds off. I don't know if Miss Sierra answered. Hello? Can you hear me? No one answered. Let's try that again. That's the one problem, folks, with the, without you know doing them pre-recorded. That's the one thing that we did prior to this um, with the episodes because it is hard to get a lot of people from around the world all together at one time. Um, these ones are going to be live, which is always interesting. Six, six, four. Is that a voicemail? It came onto a voicemail. Yeah, they didn't answer the first time, second time voicemail. So we'll give it a, f- a few minutes, folks, yeah. and we'll go ahead and jump back into it. That's okay. Um, yeah, we'll give her a couple, and then uh, gives me a chance to make her. some announcements, I guess. Yeah. So what if you you're got? 
if you're listening out there, folks, we do uh, what I should say I do want to announce that um, I have decided to restart the Celestial Oddities Paraseekers Paranormal Team. Um, I made an announcement about that the other day. I am looking for candidates, and I already have filled a couple of those slots, I believe, with um, you know people more in line with what I'm trying to do. I didn't speak up for the first go ahead of the team, and... Um, it was it was a great team. It's just it was more along the lines of what everyone else is doing in the paranormal as far as researching, and there's nothing wrong with that. I want to do some wacky shit. I want to do some really off-the-wall bonkers things that most people would shake their head and, and think that it's not going to do anything, and it might not. But if it does, I'm trying to trigger ways of using the paranormal to communicate in more depth with methods that no one else is trying. So uh, I didn't say that the first time around, and I assembled a great team. We went out and had a lot of really good times. It's just I wasn't looking for the same direction that they are, though there's nothing wrong with that direction. So I took some time off from that, did the solitary alignment thing, which I'm still going to continue to do. I've always done um, just going out and doing investigations by myself, but we'll be booking a lot of famous locations around the country for people that want to book with me. Um, And also we'll be assembling a team again and we will be, you know, putting our hand in data analysis and some very strange, you know, research. And when and if we come up with some great results, we will share that with you guys. But I did want to make that announcement for anybody that might have seen those posts. Some exciting news there. I love going out and doing investigations by myself. But you are limited to a certain extent compared to what you can do with a very good team. So let's go ahead and right. see if we can... Uh... Yeah, so here, here. Uh, check your Facebook, Garrett. We have an alternate number for Sierra. I'm talking to her now, and she's ready to go. Uh, let's get it. So sorry about that, folks, but it gave us a chance to get out a few things. And let's give Sierra a call. Hello? Hi, is this Sierra? Hi, this is Freighter Crow from Celestial Oddities. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Hey, not too bad. Give me one moment. Dan, can you hear her? She's a little quiet if we can turn her up a little bit. Even if it means my voice turns up, I can just be quiet and you can speak to her. Sierra, could you go ahead and say a couple things for me just for a sound check here? How are you doing today? Doing very well. Dan, did you hear that? Yeah, she's just a little quiet. Like She sounds very far away. Huh, I wonder why. And Sierra, it's okay. It's not you. It's just we're working out some technical kinks on our side. So just give us one little quick second here. We knew this episode, folks, tonight would be a little bit of an experimental one in the sense that the way that the dashboard works on the internet radio, um, a lot of times the second line is connected to the first, and they would be sharing the same volume knob. So I tried to eliminate that tonight with a different technique, and it, it works. But um, the problem with it is is that the sound's a little bonkers tonight. So I apologize, folks, if you are listening out there. Um, go ahead and say one more thing for me, Sarah, and Dan, tell me if you can hear. Uh, nothing on my end. Sierra, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And Dan, did you hear that? I did. It was just a little quiet. Um, Chris said it's it's good on his end. So I think that we're probably good to go. Um, where will we have Chris in the chat? Uh, let me ask him real quick. And then we'll be good to go. Well, thank you, folks, if you're listening out there. Like I said, apologize for the technical difficulties. And You know normally we run very smooth, but a um, little bit strange with what we're doing. And we're soon going to be adding in where people can call into us during the show as well. So with the new capabilities, sometimes you have to work the bugs out. So let's take a listen here. Yeah, uh, Sierra, I think we're, go- we're good to go. Um, the chat here listening tonight says that they can hear you good. It's probably just on my end. So, Garrett, if you want to go ahead and... Uh, We can get it started. Sierra, thank you so much for your patience on this and for calling in. Uh, We're very excited to hear what your story is. So go ahead and uh, tell us what you have to share. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, Dan said that he was, you know, just to go ahead and share your story with us. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. I'm not sure if you're not hearing him well either, so we might have to work around that. But he did want to thank you for coming on, as do I. What is it that you wanted to share with us tonight as far as your experience? So to give a little bit of a background, my family is a Cherokee Native American, and my experience was a couple years ago, I had moved with my parents to Oakdale, 
and my family had always believed that if you talk about skinwalkers, that, you know, you bring one to you. So I was watching movies about them, researching them a little and talking about them. Well, one day while sitting outside on our porch swing, I saw like glowing red eyes looking at me and, you know, this beast in the woods behind my house. And I quickly ran inside, burnt some sage. And ever since then, I can see it in the shadows and feel it watching. So it lingers around and has constantly followed me since then. Hmm. Very. And how old were you at this time, you said? I was 20. You were 20. And, and what's, uh, I, I, what state did you say you were living in? I live in Pennsylvania. You were in Pennsylvania. Did you, get, did you catch a clear description of what it is that you've seen? It was almost like a man, but with a deer head and, like, hooves for hands. Hmm. Do you th- now, do you think... You mentioned that obviously the, the the skinwalkers. Do you think that that could possibly be what it you know in fact was? Yes, I do believe that's what it was. No, it had antlers. Did it take on? Did you see any type of like fur or any identifying you know skin or markings on it? Uh, it's just bones. Just bones, which does fit um, a lot of stories of skinwalkers or windango or windangos. Um, so that's. Um, a very big possibility. I want to uh, check something here before we go further, and I apologize. Dan's saying for some reason on his end it's dead quiet. He can't hear you, but I can hear both of you. I'm not sure what the issue is there. I switched you guys back onto the same channel, but it's for some reason sounds like it's not reverberating back to Dan. Um, so I apologize for that, Dan, or for anybody else listening out there. Um, but no, that is fascinating. Um, did you did you see it and then you you ran quickly or what, did you get to stand there and actually see it for a handful of seconds and really um, lock eyes with one another? I saw it for about a minute and then as soon as it moved, I bolted inside my house because growing up we were taught that they were dangerous and it's not really something that you want around you. I mean, I don't blame you. I mean, seeing. And it's weird to say that because, I mean, spirits can be just as deadly as anything else. But a lot of times, you know, for myself, I do a lot of paranormal investigating. I don't necessarily think I would fear um, or, you know, I don't fear paranormal side of things as far as ghosts as much as I would a creature, even though it could still harm me. Because to be honest with you, I've never seen any type of cryptid creature, but I have seen a lot of spirits. Um, it's one thing that I've looked for and never been able to come across. So I'm always fascinated when I hear someone's story of coming across something so bizarre in the woods. Now, how wooded of an area was was your house at that time? Um, I'm not for sure if you're familiar with Oakdale at all, but I, I lived in Hanky Farms with my parents, so we had only about like a mile or two of woods behind our house before it was other houses. Hmm. So not a whole lot, which isn't uncommon. A lot of sightings um, actually are in urban areas where... Um, there isn't a whole lot of land, but there's enough that they can travel through unnoticed, but they seem to stay close to people. Yeah, for some reason, Dan so, he still doesn't, still can't hear. Well, Dan, we will work the best way we can between the two of us, and for next call, we'll see if we can fix it. Um, and go ahead with what you were going to say. Uh, hey, it's still like to follow. So I actually have a totem necklace that I have to wear. Okay. No, it might be good. I mean, depending upon, um, you know, who, who had made that for you or what semblance that holds, um, there's can be a lot of power and resonance, um, through having some type of talisman to wear, to ward off things that's used heavily in ceremonial magic. And even in the paranormal, I wear certain things to kind of keep things off of me or away from me. It's very important. Now, have you ever had any other experiences besides that? I mean, was that your one and only, like, just wild paranormal experience, or are you prone to having other things happen? It'll Sometimes there will be, like, the, the shadow people that, like, run across in front of my car, I noticed when I was driving. Okay. I, I do think it's just the uh, skinwalker messing with me, though. 
Yeah, I mean, the shadow people can be a big thing as well. I mean, sometimes it's our imagination playing with us. Sometimes it's valid shadow people. I mean, it, it's hard to say sometimes because I know sometimes that your eyes will start to play tricks on you um, with doing a lot of paranormal investigating. When you're staring down a hallway of a building at night, your mind's prone to start seeing shadows moving after a while. You have to really be discerning of that. But sometimes you do independently see them moving, and it's fascinating to actually watch them. Um, they're almost like an animal in the woods. When you when you, they start to move down a hallway, the way they duck in and out of rooms, the way they crawl along the floors. Um, if you ever get the chance, anyone out there listening, to actually watch a shadow being, intelligent being moving, it's fascinating. I mean, well, no. Right. no. Go ahead. Uh, so back in 2013, I had lost my grandmother. And she had bought me, like, the big mouth bass, like, billy fish that sings. And I had it shut off. But it was my first day going back to school. I went to leave my room to catch my bus. And the fish started singing, don't worry, be happy. And it was, it was completely off. There was no way this fish could have started singing. It didn't have batteries. And it just started singing, don't worry, be happy. I believe it was my grandma. You know. Wow, no, that would that would that would be enough to trip you out though when it first kicked on because I mean, as you said, it, it you weren't expecting it and it didn't have batteries in it, but that is a pure sign of someone trying to give you a, a sign of some sort, and that's awesome. Those are really my only two experiences. But you know what, though? That's two more than a lot of people have. I mean, we all experience things, but we a lot of times ignore them or we brush them off. When you actually have, without a shadow of a doubt, something that you know you can't brush off, it's life-changing. And I'm glad that that has happened to you. I wish everyone could experience something like that that would shake their foundation a little bit because there is so much out there that we don't know about. Um, Most people just are blind to it. Definitely an eye-opener. Well, we really appreciate you coming on to the show tonight. I appreciate your patience with everything. Like I said, unfortunately, we had a little bit of technical difficulties, and Dan couldn't really be as part of this as much as he was hoping to be, but hopefully we'll get that fixed. Um, But we do want to thank you so much for coming on the show tonight and sharing your story. That is fascinating. Um, You are by far the uh, not the only person who's ever shared with us or shared with me seeing a creature that fits somewhat of a similar description as yours um especially around here in pennsylvania and i find that part of it to be fascinating is i've heard of a lot of dogman stories or wendingo or skinwalker stories specifically around west virginia and pennsylvania which i think is pretty cool well, no problem thank you for having me and for listening absolutely well you have a wonderful night and we'll talk to you again Bye. Thank you. Take care. All right, folks. So that was Sierra sharing a story with us about a creature that she's seen out back of her home here in Pennsylvania that fit the description of possibly a skinwalker or a Wendigo, a dog man even. And those are reports that we have heard time and time again. And it just makes you think, where, you know, if you're hearing it this many times, where's it at what you know what are we dealing with here because obviously it's here so dan i know you were a little bit out of that but if you could still hear me um you know jump in i would like to hear your thoughts hereafter since you couldn't join us yeah well you know i was only able to catch you can hear me right now right i can i believe i can chris if you're out there listening and you hear anything different please let us know but we should both be here now uh go ahead and continue so I'm very familiar with the Skinwalkers and the Wendigos, and I did a lot of research on the Wendigos on are they, you know, like some sort of like genetic experiment, scientific scientific thing that was released, or are they just a species like a an inner Earth species that comes out comes out at night? Um, and there's been video games about them. There's been uh, tons and tons of horror films about the Wendigos, and that's to me kind of like what it sounds like, and. Um, I'm not surprised if if she had an experience or encounter with them. Uh, And if it was a Wendigo uh, type of skinwalker idea, I'm glad that she wasn't attacked because they're generally aggressive, very hostile. Um, uh, To me, that's kind of what it sounds like. And I have every I have every intention of of totally agreeing with her that she saw that creature. 
No, and, and she did say, and it's a shame that you weren't able to be a part of that. She did mention that, you know, she did see it. She got to watch it for about a minute or so moving around and then got the hell out of there and got back into her house, which, you know, as you said, was probably a smart thing because as cool as an experience it, as it is, um, sightings have been accompanied by attacks um, or aggressive nature um, for people who have come across these creatures. I'm sure there's a lot of people who have that have never been able to tell their story because they're not here. Um, I, I don't believe that they are usually friendly. Right. They're very hostile, very aggressive. And every time they're depicted in uh, mainstream media and entertainment, they're usually violent. So <laughs> pretty co- pretty cool. She got to have that sighting in a safe way. And <laughs> Thank you very much, Sierra, for calling and sharing in that story. And once again, we do apologize for the technical difficulties, but uh, we are somewhat experimenting here. And then uh, the show must go on, as they say. Yeah, it's weird because there's no way of hearing it how any of the three of us hear it until we go live. Because even if we do do a test as we do, Daniel, it's right. only going to let us hear each other talking. And I hear, I can hear both of us, but you can't hear them. Um, and they can't hear you, but we can. I, everything's recorded. Yeah. So very strange. There's a, there's a disconnect from me as as the second host to the caller. So that's something we'll have to experiment with You know, in the future maybe try to figure out why there's uh, miscommunication there uh, one one alternative i tried as a workaround as i pulled up the stream and was listening to the stream to try to hear the caller that way but there's a there's a relay uh delay of like there 25 is. seconds yeah so i was gonna do that too and it did uh, there's no way to do it comfortably so we'll just have to work with what we have i thought maybe what we could do here and we're sharing it with you guys live tonight folks because as fun as it, as it is we, you know we're not going to jump off the air and then jump back on it doesn't make sense right. so you can join it with us maybe for the next two callers i'll call on my cell phone and hold the cell phone out on speaker which would pick up then through my main mic it might not actually sound as bad as we would think um because it, the, my mic Mike's pretty good, and it's got a nice filter on it, so I think it might pick up the call next to me. I would hear it out loud, so would you, through my mic, and that should work. If this, if the speed of the broadcast is the same exact speed as the, uh, well, no, the I'm saying not, but the phone call would be because as I'm talking to you now, you would hear it the same way. Oh, okay, I hear you. Yeah, I'm going to do it on speakerphone, not through, you know, listening to the broadcast. So we should be able to do that and uh, and be okay as far as that goes. So uh, once again, folks, we apologize for any, um, you know, problems with the program tonight. But we will be back on track hopefully here in a moment. And then uh, we'll be back as normal. Uh, so the second phone call is someone near and dear to you. And that is your mother. And she wants to share a story with us that you said kind of blew your mind. And I'm looking really forward to hearing this. Um, so why don't we give her a call? She was expecting us around 8.30. Is that correct? Yeah, in between 825 and 830. So she'll be on standby ready to go. And um, she's she's a big fan of the show, guys. She Garrett, she loves everything that you and I do together. And um, she'll really be excited to to share her story. And uh, I won't spoil that for you guys. And uh, if so, Garrett, before we call her and before we start, if the speakerphone things like weird or it's echoing or causing any sort of interference, it's totally fine just to do it as we were, and I'll comment after she's done speaking. Okay, perfect. I'll give her a call right now, dialing up the number, folks. All right, here we go. Hello, is this Squaw? Yes, it is. Hi, this is Freighter Crow. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. Dan, can you hear her? Yeah, working out. I can hear her fine. Okay, perfect. We were having a little bit of technical difficulties, but I think we worked the bugs out, so I'm happy to say that. So, well, as I was saying, thank you so much for coming on the show. We know you're a big fan, obviously very connected to the show, as you were Daniel's mother, and we're really excited to to hear the uh, story that you're going to share with us tonight. Dan didn't give me any details, so I'm very excited to hear uh, what it is you guys have to say. Well, I'm excited to tell you guys. It's, a, it's an old story. It, it dates back, I guess... 30 years, when Daniel was just, I, I, I was trying to remember, I think he was like four or five or something, not to give your age up, but anyhow, <laughs> he and I had gone out one night together um, miniature golfing, 
and we lived in California at the time, and there was a miniature golf place up in um, Buena Park, California, for anyone that might be familiar with that. So we golfed, and Daniel was hungry, and so there was a Burger King across the street, and we were going to go over there and get some French fries and stuff. So we got in the truck from where we were parked on the main street and went around to the Burger King, and we were sitting at the drive through and it's dark, you know, it's probably 9 o'clock at night or something, 8 o'clock, 8.30. And I don't know if any of your listeners have ever seen or heard a transformer blow. You know, the electrical things on the poles, on the power Absolutely. Poles. But they're, yeah, they're very loud, then they're very bright, and they're scary. <laughs> um, depending upon how close you are to it, or if you can actually see it and not just see the light of it from a distance... So we were sitting there, and I'm I'm always looking up. If I'm not driving at night, I'm looking up. If I'm sitting in my car, I just have it. I love the sky. I love the stars. And I like to look for things. So we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, the transformer right above where we were just parked. We had just left the parking spot below it. It blew for some unknown reason. And it did this, you know, you have like four seconds of bright uh, purplish-blue intense electric light going, you know, and stuff dripping down from it. And uh, it lit up the sky to where I saw this giant ship above us. It was just unbelievable. It was triangular and black. And it was like the same color as the sky. It was totally spelt, you know what I mean? You wouldn't have seen it unless that at that moment that transformer had blown like it did, something bright to light up the sky. I'm like, do you see that, buddy? And, you know, he's young. And, and he probably saw it, maybe he didn't, maybe he was just excited and scared from the transformer blowing where we, we had just been parked, you know, I don't know how many, how far away, it was like four lanes of cars, you know, away. And um, I go, let's go follow it, <laughs> let's try and follow it. So we did, you know, we tried, and I, I lost, and it was gone. It was gone when the light went out, actually, it was just gone. But, um, yeah, so that happened. <laughs> no, it's very, <laughs> it pretty... very interesting. Yeah, it was. And, you know, in retrospect, I think back to, could it have been the stealth bomber? Because right around, you know, the time that Daniel was, uh, what was it, 1990 was when they released that. And that would have kind of matched up with the timing. But it was too big. You know, I'm, I don't think that, that that was it. It was too much. Well, although I've never seen one of those in real life either. I don't know how big they are. But I have, like, this propensity for seeing things that other people don't see. Um, or for, like, on UFOs to, like, show themselves to me, even in broad daylight, where I'm looking around wondering, does anyone else see this? And I don't really feel that other people are reacting the way I am. So it's just weird, and I wonder, maybe you guys can help me out with this, if these things show themselves to people, can show themselves to certain people and not to everyone, could that be a thing? <sighs> It could be. I'm I'm kind of curious. You know, what, what time you said it was about nine p.m. Yeah. I'm and, obvious. And like the power went out when that transformer blew. It, it kind of made me think there was a correlation between that blowing and this thing going overhead. Exactly. It wasn't like there was a series of them blowing, just that one. And I, my, I was going to say that I think there's a correlation there between the energy burst that would blew out the transform and made the power go out, and because of the flashes that it do that it does give off, did show something that you normally wouldn't see. It as you said, stealth technology of some sort, whether it be the military and it be a stealth bomber type of of, of you know aircraft, or was this an alien vessel of some sort? Um, I would definitely think there was a correlation between the, the sighting and, and the blowing of the transformer, and, and they do give off a lot of flashes, um, and it takes a hell of a lot of energy to blow them up, and it's pretty fascinating whenever you do see it. In fact, uh, it's ironic, about a week ago or so, a week and a half ago, my wife had seen one coming home. Um, one had blew on a telephone pole, and the telephone pole had caught on fire. So um, it, 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 we've seen a few of them, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's bright. It's a beautiful light. It's really mesmerizing, I think. Yeah, it is. It's like fireworks almost. It's like a a different type of fireworks because of the colors. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, I mean, it lasted probably four or five seconds because it did like the double thing where it goes, and it's thinking about it, you know, and then it finally blows. Yeah. So it was, you know, like maybe five seconds. I don't know, probably. 
enough to light up the sky. That's that's wild. And um, then the weird part was everything went dark because it knocked out the power, you know, up on that side of the street. So it was even darker when it went out. So I really couldn't even see even worse, you know, once it went out. What was your feelings at that it's point? Weird. I mean, because you, you had now seen something you know was out of this world or seemed to be. And obviously the flashing of the transformer kind of has you on, on end too. Um, and then all of a sudden pitch darkness. I mean, what was your feelings at that moment? I wanted to find it. I wanted to catch it. I wanted to see it again. I love that. Yeah. You were curious. You weren't scared of it. You were like, wait a second, what is going on? Come back here. Um, exactly exactly. where I'm at with it. Because it was slow moving. It wasn't like, wow, like a big, you know, like a jet would be. It was slow. It was, you know? Hmm. And maybe it was observing. I don't know, but I just know I'll never forget it. I know that. Well, that, I want to and come that, to... that kind of... Oh, go ahead. probably started his Daniel's curiosity right there. I mean, when you have me for a mom, some crazy mom that's going to go, let's go try and find this spaceship when you saw. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you did and you just don't remember. Maybe maybe they blanked out that memory and you did in fact uh, see them that day and went with them. Um, you never know; it's always a possibility. I hear a lot of stories of that right. too, where there's a time lapse. All of a sudden, it's an hour and a half later. You're back in the exact same parking lot. You've seen it, but you don't remember a single thing after that. You know, and that's something that I would have never thought of at that time to even check. You know what I mean? To even notice, I wouldn't have noticed that. And that that's time. the thing is, most right. people don't. And it, it, if they do it small enough or quick enough and bring you back quick enough, then in your reality, you don't know. An hour went by. Okay, I'm just confused. Now, if it's four hours, that's a little bit different. But I mean, if it's nine to ten thirty, you might not really notice because you're reveling in the fact of the sighting that you've seen, not really giving a damn about what time of night it is, other than you might look to say, oh, it happened at ten thirty, but you don't realize it was nine when you went in to wherever you were. So it it, it happens a lot to people and people I've you not know, only listened to accounts from, but talked to. Um, that have given similar stories, they talk about time lapses of, of small chunks of time. Wow, that's crazy. I never even thought of that possibility. Because the thing is, we've been golfing. I, w- I probably wasn't paying attention to the time at all. Yeah, true. You know, like I just know it was nighttime. That's probably what they were banking on if if they were there if they did if anything like that did happen or maybe they just popped in real quick and zoomed off. But it's still a great experience, Dan. I would like to hear. Um, on your perspective, do you remember this event? I mean, obviously you were very young and this kind of brought a flashback when she talked about it. What are your thoughts from your angle of the story? Yes. And for the record, I'm not sure if she'll be able to hear me as well, but I will give my feedback on this. Um, when she reminded me of the story last night, I was getting memories. I was getting visions and small little synapses, sort of like fragmented Uh, images of that night when it happened because like my mom said I was probably like four or five and I do remember uh, one thing that we used to do when I was a kid is she would uh, wrap me up in a blanket and put me in the back of the truck and we would look at we would stargaze or we would watch uh, the fireworks every year so I always remember kind of being out under the stars in the vehicle with my mom and something we always did when I was a kid all the way into, into my teens and Uh, I do remember the explosion of that transformer, but I don't remember the craft. Now, one thing that I will say to get a little esoteric and a little metaphysical because that's what I do is I work with the extraterrestrial now uh, as an adult. And one thing that I've learned is whenever there is a, a UFO sighting where you see an alien craft, it's synchronized. From their perspective, it's planned. It's kind of an orchestrated event that you will experience and it will have effects on you that you may not have a conscious awareness of but might unpack over the course of many many years just being in the presence of you know a cryptid or an extraterrestrial uh whether you remember remember it or not it does you know it can give you what's called as downloads where you'll get uh cosmic data downloaded into your your field of awareness that may you may or may not be conscious of but it'll unpack and download little by little over the course of your life so what i would say is if my mother and i saw a triangular shaped craft which i can actually tell you some of the races that use triangular shaped crafts uh would be like the sasani and the yael uh they use triangular crafts uh this was probably synchronized in an orchestrated experience for my mom and I specifically. 
and they blew the transformer so that we would look up into the sky and and be in the presence of the, of their energy and have whatever downloads that they gave us at the time so that uh, we would be more open to them uh, throughout the course of our lives. Now, my mom is somebody who's always been very supportive, very open and receptive to any of the esoteric experiences that I've had or any of the strange interests that I've had over the years. She's been very – she's been a cultivator of those things. She's not the, the one that tell you, oh, you're, you're just seeing things or you believe in silly stuff or those things aren't possible. She's more like, whoa, cool. I want to – I wish I could see that or tell me about it. you know. And she's had many of her own experiences. So I believe this was sort of like a, a special thing that really did happen to us so that throughout our, the course of our lives, we would be more open to the concept of extraterrestrials and be more familiar in their energy. And although um, I cannot say that I remember seeing the triangular craft, I do remember the explosion of that transformer. I do remember seeing the lights and the flashes, and uh, I, I'm pretty blown away by that whole experience and grateful that my mom, you know, all these years later is willing to share that in a public way. I think it's pretty cool. No, that's absolutely awesome. Squaw, thank you so much for sharing that. It's great that you guys had that experience You're welcome. together. I'm I mean, so glad that you, I had this opportunity, and Daniel has such a good way of putting things, does He can explain <laughs> things so well. You he's do, he's very articulated. I love it. You both are. I'm so excited to be here. I'm going to let you guys go so you can get on with your show, but I appreciate this opportunity, and... I hope your listeners enjoy it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. You have a great rest of your night. You too. Take care. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> How cool is that? Absolutely. No, that's a great story too, man. I mean, like I said, um, you know, one thing I found fascinating on it is you just don't know that maybe it was just a quick sighting or something could have happened because as you know, Daniel, you've always had a very distinct connection with alienistic beings and, you're, and yeah. you being a medium and connecting to them maybe it started then because it's an experience yeah. while you were young that you don't exactly remember but your life was shaped by aliens thereafter she's had experiences as well so it is very curious um did they let you see them or right. did you see them and it wasn't meant to be seen and that had to change the course of your entire future then because once they were seen what's their alternatives let's let's change this being's life and then print a little bit of our intelligence inside of it so that it becomes one of the awoken ones you know so it, it it's it's fascinating yeah man and i like that idea as well i will tell you guys not to go on a tangent um but i have seen 50 or 60 uh ufo extraterrestrial craft in my life since that point and like my mom <clears throat> fully disclosed I'm in my mid thirties at this point, but I, I mean, I have seen 50 or 60 craft and all different shapes and sizes and colors with other people by myself. Um, and I think that it, you know, it started at an early time in my life to sort of prepare me for more contact, whether that be, you know, through the channeling state, like I do now, or in unconscious ways, like you mentioned that I don't remember. Well, and, and Chris just left a comment on here. He said subconsciously it stuck with him even at such a young age. And that's exactly what I was saying is is you experienced it. Maybe you did see it. You tucked that away, forgot about it. Don't even register as that being a part of your life. But very well in the deep subconscious, it's planted roots and grown into the connections that you now have which happens a lot. I don't want to say this is a trauma, but I guess in a way you could say that, um, is, is when there's traumas, people will tuck them away and forget that they ever even happened. How could you forget something horrific happened to you? You just erase it because your mind is a wonderful thing. Um, and it's endless on what it can do. And that's the same thing with this is sometimes people have experiences and they blank them out. One time, or one thing I should say that I noticed that people will have an experience with and then almost starts to erase itself is any type of parasitic or demonic possession. People who have undergone that after the fact, when you talk to them about it, 
they start to believe did it even happen mm. was this just a dream or i don't really remember everything's very hazy i mean i really don't remember and and it seems like that happens to a lot of people is even right after that you can get this entity out of someone they know like wow i'm groggy but something just happened but as the weeks go on they almost start to erase the fact that it's happened at all like it regresses they regress it exactly and you can bring it up to him three years later and say hey man i know you don't really want to talk about it. remember that story when this happened they're like well, I, no i really don't hmm. and it's strange like something's planted there to erase it and and in another story if i may we'll jump into our last call or about, about that time i had shared with the listeners last season on one of the odd world episodes where I had stumbled across a town in the middle of the, f- the woods or the forest with a friend of mine. We used to go exploring um, for hours. We'd climb mountainsides and hillsides and just go miles deep into the woods, just having fun and being stupid kids. And we came across a small little village with no roads that led to it. Just about 10 houses sitting in the middle of a clearing of the woods that I had never heard of or seen before local to my hometown. Never had seen it on a map, nothing. So we were watching it, and normally we would always go explore empty and abandoned buildings and all kinds of stuff like that, but we were both, for some reason, very hesitant to go down and see it. And, um, you know, hey, do you want to go down and see that? No, man, do you? No. And for some reason, we didn't know why we said no, and we just avoided it at all costs and left it. Then it started resonating with me, why did we, and I want to find it again. And I searched for a couple years that same set of of land and hillsides and never once could find that piece of land again. And I told the story about while I was there, a man came out with a rifle and says, get off of my property now and um, threatened us with a gun and kicked us off his property. And he says, this area is posted. You should know that you shouldn't be up here. And I said, I didn't see a single posted sign anywhere. And he says, they're everywhere. Well, there wasn't. On the way out, we looked. The the moral of the story is, is a couple years later, I brought this up to my friend, someone who's obviously going to remember finding a hidden town that doesn't exist. Um, and remember a guy coming out with a gun and all that. It had cleared from his mind. He's like, I, I don't remember any of that, brother. And and this wasn't a dream of mine. I mean, this happened. This was two specific individual incidences. Um, and there was something always off about this town. And it ended up feeding into my workings and some gnosis that I gained later down the road of the connectivity between them. But I had, with my friend, discovered some sort of portal that it led to whatever this was. Um and it it for some reason didn't erase in me and if anything just blew the lid off my head as far as all kinds of weird stuff happening to me afterwards same maybe for you daniel um but my friend who maybe didn't have any gifts or wouldn't have been a right fit doesn't remember the fact that it ever even happened right now i'm going to tell you guys just one little thing um if anyone is familiar or wants to look up uh bashar uh who is from the essasani he teaches that When you are in the presence of an extraterrestrial or a higher density being, the human body and the human psyche, it goes through a very rapid, what's called as frequency dissonance syndrome. And any negative traumas that you're holding on to or emotional baggage that you have or uh, programming from the 3D paradigms that are really limiting, being in the presence of higher frequency beings can actually give you this frequency dissonance where a lot of it will surface rapidly quick and it can make you like psychotic. It can make you make you go out of your mind because you'll be processing way too many changes to your understanding of reality so quick that a lot of people just can't come back from it. They like They can actually go catatonic. And so what happens is when you are in the presence of extraterrestrial beings – uh, you will go through that process and then you can interact and communicate to these beings in like a face-to-face conscious way. But then as soon as you're outside of their presence, you instantly forget that they exist or that you have the experience at all, almost like the men in black who like wipe your memory with the little flashy thing. Like it's similar to that, but only there isn't a technology. It's just a phenomenon that happens with a lot of ET races. So when people ask like, when are we going to have open contact or how can we never meet the aliens? Well, a lot of people do. You just don't remember. And it's like wiped from your memory as soon as you leave their presence as like a safeguard so that the interaction between you and their race doesn't actually ruin your life. And And you can go back to society. 
Yeah, because if, if you're not ready for it, if you're searching and ready for it and you find it, maybe that's a, something that you can see and your mind can take in and absorb. But if you are not expecting to all of a sudden have your life disrupted by seeing an alien vessel and an extraterrestrial, it's going to do some damage to you, whether you think you're badass or not. Right now, so many people will be like, I'd run towards it and love it. But the thing is, a lot, a lot of people, if and when they've seen that, would shit their pants and it would mess something up in their head. Um, so yeah. there has to be a right time and place place for it. There are some of us, though, as your mother, me, you, um, I think who would go towards it. Um, for the most part, it's just really hard to say of the vibration you're getting off it because as our first caller had mentioned, she's seen what could have been a skinwalker or a dog man. And I would like to think I would want to make communication with it. But at the same time, if I seen a wolf man looking at me, there's probably a good chance I'm going to get the fuck out of there and get in my house. All I right. mean, I, I, you just don't know. I mean, that some things don't want to just because you want to interact with it doesn't mean that it wants to interact with you right yeah. fascinating stories though. really cool so let's dive into the last caller of the night this is going to be chanel and if you want to go ahead and use the method that you just used so that her and i can uh communicate or so that i could hear her that will be fine and then going forward in the future episodes we'll have the kinks worked out so that's done through the program we'll certainly try that's for sure let's go ahead and give her a call now and Okay. Hello? Hello, is this Chanel? Yeah, can you hear me? I can, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, perfect. This is Freighter Crow from Celestial Oddities. Daniel is with me, although we are having a little bit of difficulties tonight for some reason between Dan hearing the callers and the callers hearing Dan, but we will certainly work around that. Everyone can hear all of us. It's just you guys, for some reason, won't be able to hear each other too good. But we do want to thank you for coming on the show tonight, and uh, we really look forward to hearing your experiences with the paranormal. Well, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So why don't you go ahead and deep dive into your experience or experiences and tell us a little bit about uh, what you've uh, come face to face with. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to try to explain this the best way that I can, because uh, my vocabulary is very mundane. So I actually recently had an experience that triggered a memory of a past experience I didn't know I had. <laughs> okay. So, um, I've, I feel like I've told Daniel about this before, but the first experience was kind of like a dream, but also wasn't. I was like in the, in between the waking and sleeping state, whatever that's called. I don't remember. The but, hypnagogic state. Very, very powerful state of mind. Yes. And I remember that I was hearing a conversation happening. And it wasn't just like one conversation. It was like a group of people or like um, a council of people. Or if you're in a group of people and then you have other people around you also talking, it kind of sounds like that loud, you don't know what everyone else is saying sort of thing. Okay. Um, and I couldn't make out with what anyone was saying. I could sense that they were talking about me were discussing me but i don't know if it was english i don't know what language it was and i just remember that when i woke up i remembered a another experience i had hmm. when I was younger like i want to say like six or seven where i was i woke up in the middle of the night and i was walking down the hallway and, like, to the right of the hallway, there's a wall that has two, like, windows. And there was this light coming through the window. And at first I was like, well, it's the moonlight. And then I sort of followed where the light was coming from. <laughs> and it was coming down, like, through the ceiling. By the way, I've never talked about this publicly. <laughs> no, we really appreciate you doing so. We love our guests coming on and sharing these amazing moments. I find them fascinating, and, and uh, so do our listeners. So thank you so much, obviously, for, for being the first uh, group of people ever to get to hear this. Yeah. Uh, so it was coming through the ceiling, this um, beam or ray of light. It's It wasn't really like a concentrated light. It was more like if, you, like if you've ever seen 
the sunlight coming through the clouds, like the rays of the sun. Yes. It was kind of like that. It was like a soft light. And it came down through the ceiling and it wrapped around like my head and then it went like around my whole body, if that makes sense. And it was kind of like this protective barrier or shield of some kind. Um, And then I could sense that there was a presence in the room, like beings or spirits, I don't know. But I could sense that it was a male and a female. I never saw them. I never saw anyone, but I could sense them in the room, if that makes sense. And I wasn't scared, but I also like was like, what's going on here, you know? Wow, that's... Dan has talked before about alien races that will do visitations of people in their bedroom, usually while asleep, where they do experiment on things or just do research or heal and fix an individual without them really knowing about it. And a lot of times, as we kind of just got done talking about a moment ago on the show before we called you, is it, you'll forget about it even happening. It will seem like it was a dream to you. Um, and a lot of times you do feel their presence and don't see them, or you do see something, but it becomes very hazy. So that's interesting that you say that. It literally backs up the points that we were just talking about. Um, do you feel that that dream then, it triggered... That was the trigger to this? Do you feel that they're just ironic and separate incidences that just kind of connect? Or do you think that 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 hypnagogic state you were in truly was a message to make you remember um, the event? So my honest, like, sense with the, the, um, you know, the, the dream state sort of thing was that I tapped into a conversation that was going on that I almost maybe wasn't supposed to be hearing, but I was anyway. And then that just kind of sort of triggered that memory. And I definitely think that they're connected, but I don't know if it was, I don't know that if it was really like purposefully done, if that makes sense. I think it was more of like a, Oops. <laughs> so you re- you discovered something that maybe you shouldn't have heard, and because of that, it made you have a flashback almost from a sleeping to an awake state, made you have a flashback of something that did happen. Um, so it triggered it, but it probably wasn't meant to happen because you weren't supposed to hear this conversation to begin with. Yeah, and I know that, like, I don't know what was being spoken about in the conversation because i don't even think it was english that was being spoken to be honest but um yeah i definitely think that they're connected and i i like that i remember this this experience now because i think that um like the the people or whatever or whoever was in the room with me that i wasn't seeing um is now with me yeah that's wow. That's a very interesting one. Um, Dan, I know that you guys really can't hear each other too well. You might be able to hear her much better now with the little tweak that we made a little bit ago. Chanel, I don't know if you're going to hear him. Um, but Dan, why don't you give your take on that? What are your thoughts on this experience? Yeah, no, it's really awesome. And Chanel, uh, whether you can hear me or not, I really appreciate you calling and sharing your story, uh, specifically because it is something that seems to be private and that you haven't shared before. And one one thing that I want to do with this show is create a safe place that people can come to and feel welcomed and, and understood because that's exactly what I'm using this platform for, is uh, somewhere that I can go and speak my truth and share share my experiences with so thank you um for what i would say is as a star seed if you're familiar with the concept of star seeds or indigos or blue rays or grid workers or rainbow children all of these terms that we have for uh, humans that have uh, special connections to other incarnations to other dimensions other densities uh we have a council in a sense, we have a council of beings and races that work with us in our human form as star seeds that are always watching us. They're always with us, like a spirit guide in a sense, always, uh, you know, guiding us throughout the journey of our 3D incarnation. And for me, it sounds like almost like you uh, tapped in 
to the the meetings and the discussions and the the mentor sort of aspect of these beings when they're always watching over you and present even if you can't perceive them they can perceive you and that goes for all of our spirit guides all of our councils all of our et counterparts that are watching over us and helping us throughout our lives in little ways whether it's just a whisper or a, your inner voice a feeling in your chest or whether we're having like face to face weird i can't explain this interaction type of thing we have councils and i feel like you had an interaction that you experienced them you you connected to them whether it was supposed to happen or it was like a a bleed through or a slip in to that version of reality where you kind of saw behind the curtain in a way that we as humans aren't supposed to i definitely think that you're dealing with your council and like you said, you have uh, you're feeling their presence with you now, and you feel like maybe that they're in your life in a more conscious way. Uh, we never know if these things are synchronized and planned, or if it's like a fluke thing, like a glitch in the matrix. But um, I think it's really cool that you tapped into that discussion and and you were present for that. And it's like your 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 higher density self sort of just saw that little moment and i think similar to the the ufo encounter that my mom and i had when i was a five-year-old i think these things unlock more of a sensory awareness maybe expand our consciousness a little bit so that now you can actually perceive the, this being or this these uh council ships that were always with you before that you didn't know but since you saw into that window now you feel their presence more consciously and uh, there's a lot you can do with that from this point going forward but i would say that it's a, it's a positive thing i would say it's it's an empowering thing like i don't feel like you're in any danger at all if anything i feel like you have more support than ever so that those are my two cents i think it's really awesome no i certainly think uh it is as well chanel did you hear uh, what he had to say there i believe you should have on that one yeah yeah i heard everything Perfect. Yeah, I was I, able to get it figured out then after the first call went a little wrong. We got the rest of the show taken care of, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. I definitely, when I had the experience um, when I was so young, you know, I felt that the, the whoever was in the room definitely was a friend. They were, like, I, I knew them. They knew me. But, you know, in the moment, as a kid, you're just kind of like, um... <laughs> What's uh, what's this? <laughs> I can imagine it would be pretty shocking because, like I said, I have been fortunate enough to have a lot of spiritual encounters myself. But when it comes to aliens and cryptids, there's really never been anything that I specifically have experienced that I can think of other than uh, two years ago I did see a craft in the sky for the first time. As I, I will say that that finally happened to me um, on the way home from work. I seen something that can't quite be explained. But other than that, there's never been anything outside the spiritual realm that have, I've experienced in those realms. Um, and I'm always kind of envious for people who have. So I can imagine as a kid, you know, seeing or feeling the presence of multiple beings in the room and feeling like. Um, you know, the, the, their energy rating off of them, you know, have to, had to have been pretty wild. Oh, yeah. And it's interesting because as a kid, I know that I was very, very open and receptive to that wor that realm, that world. And as I get got older, of course, I sort of shut it down a little bit. So I think now it's kind of like they're telling me, Chanel, we got to we got to we got to open you back up again. We got to get you going here. <laughs> you now, know what I mean? Do you meditate by any chance? I don't. <laughs> I you, really don't. You I really don't. should, though, because honestly, the fact that you had this this dream, um, it's almost like you astral projected in a way, um, you know, and that could be what you did is, is you were connected to certain, you know, as, as Dan said, certain densities and certain vibrations that if people astral project, you can do amazing things with astral projection. And when you did that, maybe you slipped into it not knowing you were doing it. And that's what brought you across a little spark of a part of you you don't quite know yet um and that can unlock massive potential and opportunities for you and meditation is usually the key to doing so is once you start to really dig and peel back the layers of yourself you find altogether someone different than who you are um and sometimes it's connected to bigger things and maybe for some reason you are connected to whatever these beings might be dan would you agree with that 
Yes, absolutely. And Chanel and I have discussed meditation for years. I think Chanel, I'm trying to remember when her and I met, started talking and became friends. I think it was 2016 or, or early 2017. I'm not exactly sure, but I know Chanel that meditation has always been something that you've struggled with. But I agree with Garrett that if you can tap in and raise your frequency a little bit, you're going to just get downloads and downloads of this information. And you might start getting names of who these who this group is, you might be seeing more mental images or, or seeing more of their physical appearance. And it would be really something that uh, he Garrett and I would strongly suggest you explore and uh, take advantage of because I think there's a lot to uh, uncover and, and unlock and what's going on with you right now. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Well, I will definitely try it. I'll get myself disciplined into doing it at least. You know, maybe I'll do that like 21 days thing where you create a habit in 21 days or whatever it is. You should do it because here's the thing is everyone when they think of meditation and they think of having to do these practices think that it's going to have to be an hour a day, 45 minutes a day. And it can be, certainly it can be hours. But I would say five to ten minutes, if you can even find five or ten minutes to just get peace. Now, that's not going to get you to the levels that I'm, I'm speaking of earlier, but it's going to be a start for you that when you get five to ten minutes a day of pure peace, your day starts going together much better than it did before. Things just start to seem to fall in place for you just from really giving yourself 10 minutes of peace. As, as a modern human being, we're constantly on the go with work and with our personal lives and with social media and with everything that's going on. The only time we really take to ourselves is when we're sleeping, and that doesn't count. So when you take those 10 minutes and you really dig in, things start to change. But it's more along the lines when you're spending a half an hour, 35 minutes, if you can eventually spare that, you can start to reach levels within you that it gives you these experiences where maybe you would go back to that room and see these beings and maybe start to, as Dan said, see visual imagery of symbols and signs um, that happens in my practice, though it's not alienistic. I channel and, and sometimes will be shown symbolism and instructions on ritual that I use, and it usually is very powerful once used. So something I definitely think if you want to explore further into what this is, um, I would suggest it because I think you'll be happy with what you find. Yeah, definitely. I think this might be my sign that I need to because I've been seeing a lot of meditation related things lately. So that's maybe it. That's it's it now's the time. <laughs> like you said, create a habit in 21 days. I say start uh, not tomorrow because you weren't prepared for it, but start on Saturday morning and then, you know, go forward. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight, certainly sharing with us your story that you've never shared with anyone. It is fascinating, um, something me and Daniel will talk about. We are keeping log of everyone's stories that's shared with us to try to find similarities between them, to try to connect dots, and through this log of information, start to really fill in the blanks for a lot of people of what they experienced and what others might experience in the future, and you're helping with that, so thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Oh, not a problem. You have a wonderful rest of your night. You too. Thank you. Well, Dan, that was another great story. I think we figured out uh, the way of making the show work a little unorthodox, but, you know, sometimes we have to do that, and we'll see if we can figure out something a little bit better, you know, down the road. But all three stories tonight were great, from Wendingos or Dogmen and Skinwalkers to Vessel Visualization and uh, full-blown, you know, possible full-blown astral projection and... Um, encounters within one's bedroom of alien beings. That's it's fascinating. Yeah, man, and I love that people are are sharing these experiences. And listen, to close out this very special episode, one thing I want to tell the listeners is that you guys are creating a safe place for me. You guys are are creating a community of people who are uh, having experiences that. They, don't always know how to explain or have an answer for, but are willing to share it and investigate it. And, you know, Freighter and I are big investigators, uh, very consciously, you know, traveling our lives. And so I've been having these experiences ever since I was a little tiny kid, obviously. And um, I love to talk about it, you know. And one thing that people tell me all the time is they, they don't always feel like 
they can share these things with their friends or their family or uh, talk about this in the workplace. It's just too esoteric, too fringe to sort of um, share, you know, with the fear of judgment. And um, I just want you guys to know that you are helping me and you guys are doing me a favor by giving me a safe place that I can speak my truth and share more aspects of myself that I may or may not just be like screaming from the mountaintops. So we want you guys to know that you too can come to Celestial Oddities and share your stories or just listen to others sharing their stories and, and that it could be a safe place for you to explore the unknown, explore the metaphysical and the esoteric and the spiritual, and uh, that these things are real. These, these, these things are happening to people. This type of stuff exists whether you believe it or not. You can't deny people's personal encounters that were very real to them. So this is what Celestial uh mission statement has always been from the beginning, is to collect stories and connect the dots so that we can make a, a greater sense of the total scope of, you know, the things that are sort of happening behind the scenes and behind the gears and cogs of reality uh, that might be a little strange or paranormal, but uh, is, is, is another aspect of of um, reality that needs to be explored and disclosed. It does. And, and, you know, think about it. If our callers are saying that they've never really, or some of our callers are saying they never really shared this with anyone in their life, think about how many millions of people have experienced something that have not shared with anybody in their life. And the reason why a lot of this stays hidden and, and, and obscure is because it is strange. It is something different. You don't want to talk about it in your everyday life or be judged. So you really don't. And a lot of people, even if they are your friends, are going to think you're a little bit crazy if they haven't experienced something. But a lot of people, whether they admit to it or not, have experienced something. Whether they tell you or not is a different story. Um, but as we start to connect these dots, it shows how much is really out there around us this world is very very different than what you believe it is for a lot of people so uh, fascinating great stories tonight we thank everybody for being patient with the new style of things and we will continue to work out the bugs i have upcoming episodes and we'll close down for the evening next week thursday june 24th we have an interview with an urban shaman that goes by lepus rex he um says he has performed quite a few exorcisms banishings and cleansings of homes in the spirit world he has shown me some very fascinating photos of spiritual captures and flame with pyromancy um, and some other wild, wild things that we talked about as well. Um, interesting stories we'll be talking about. He wishes to keep himself anonymous, so he did give us the name of Lepus Rex, um, but he is an urban shaman, so we look forward to bringing him on and talking to him following episode july 8th we are going to deep dive daniel and i into organism 46b which we know a lot of our guests out there or listeners out there had uh, requested and then the next two would be psychic medium tara renee bontello who is uh, pretty impressive in the psychic world um, and seeing people's futures and, and hidden uh, meanings of things and then lastly for the four spot is going to be uh, august 19th David Weiss, flat earth expert. He's been on several different programs and we're going to deep dive into the subject of flat earth theory. He has a strong case as to why he believes that is in fact what is going on. So some great episodes coming up and we thank you for everything. If you have any suggestions, any ideas, hit us up at celestial oddities at gmail.com and Daniel, thank you again, brother, for another great, uh, great time together. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Freighter. You're awesome co-host don't sweat the small stuff man we'll work out the kinks absolutely well folks we appreciate it we'll catch you next time next week thursday night take care celestial oddities out